Fuck. I'm Johnny. Looks like we're trying something a little different. Today, we're getting a little technical, so hold on to your pants. But if you do any kind of audio, from making music, making videos, podcasts, or even talking strategy to people over Skype while you're playing video games, you're gonna want to know about this. We're gonna be talking about compression. Now this is squeezing the dynamic range of sound. It's one of the primary weapons in the loudness war. And like most weapons, it can be used for good or for awesome. It makes your quiet parts loud and your loud parts loud so that your sound is perceived as louder. So why would you even use one, you might be asking. And if you're not, I'm gonna tell you anyways. First of all, is to tame the dynamic range of some instruments or sounds, especially like your voice, anything where there's lots of space between the quiet and the loud side. Second, as mentioned before, it really is one of the primary arms in the loudness war. If you don't know what the loudness war is, Hank Green actually explains it in his video, so go check that out, link in the doobly-doo. Third, it's a way to impart a certain musical character by shaping the envelope of the sound. It can add a lot more sustain to guitars and pianos, and it can glue together the drum parts of a song or even an entire track, making it seem a lot more cohesive. So, how do you use one? Well, let's start with the simplest compressor. Some compressors are one knob jobs. You turn them up, you turn them down. So we'll start with one of these. This one knob is basically the threshold. This is the level of sound that it takes to turn a compressor on. So if you have a sound wave like this, when the waveform crosses that threshold, bam, the compressor turns on. When the compressor is on, the volume is then turned down on your sound. This is where the magic happens. The compressor automatically turns up the volume of the sound and you have more loudness. Now some compressors have two knobs. <laughs> They're kind of like nipples. The first knob is still your threshold like before. The second one is ratio. And this is how much the compressor is going to squeeze the sound. A low ratio, like one to two, or even one to one and a half, will gently round and sculpt the sound. Whereas a ratio like one to 10, will hammer it like a deranged communist Mario. When working with compressors, start by using the hammer approach and work your way to the sculpting approach. Now, most compressors have more knobs. We're gonna talk about three more. Attack, release, and makeup. No, not that kind of makeup. Now attack, and I told you these things were weapons of war. Attack is how long before the compressor starts to act when that magical threshold is hit. With an impulse-like sound, and the attack is too long, the compressor will miss it entirely. With a really fast attack though, it will reduce the level of that clap. The longer you make the attack, the more transparent it will be. But beware of clipping. That's the evil distortion that happens when you push too much volume through. Now let's talk about release. This is how long it's gonna take the compressor to stop its volume reduction after the threshold is finished. This release is really important. It's the thing that can really sculpt the sound. When it's used on a rhythmic track, like a drum loop, it can really define the sound of the compressor. Now finally, let's talk a little bit about the last one, which is makeup gain. If you're new to compressors, hopefully your compressor has an auto makeup gain setting, and you just use that, just click that, okay? If you don't, then you're just gonna have to use your ears and your meters. Turn the volume up and watch for clipping, listen for distortion. I talked a little bit about these things, how to use these magical knobs. Unfortunately, there's no real magical settings because it reacts to the input level of what you feed it. There's no magic bullet compressor setting that's gonna give you awesome sound, but there's a way you can get the sound that you want. The first trick is to start with a massive threshold, a massive ratio, really fast attack, and automatic release. So you're basically smooshing the sound. Watch the gain reduction meter it should be bouncing around like frantic bunny rabbits. And then start by playing with the release and the attack and get it sounding just right. And then you can lift up the threshold, maybe reduce the ratio and just make it sound perfect. Ultimately, good compression should be transparent. One of the very important things is that you must A, B your sound. This is where you switch between the compressed signal and the normal signal back and forth. And the switch should be fairly quick too, so you, you don't your ears don't get a chance to adjust. Now, you're not really testing to see if the signal is louder. Of course it is. That's the whole point of compression, is to make everything louder. What you're testing is to see the other effects of compression. The best thing you can do is to put some makeup gain afterwards. This is more of an advanced tip. So if you're just starting out, don't worry about this part yet. Let's talk about interesting ways you can use your compressor. Let's start with parallel compression. This is where you take your compressor and you mix it along with a dry signal. This sounds really good on drums. Like, Studi Guy has been talking about this forever. It does give it a really nice sound. You get the benefits of compression, but you don't lose the musicality of the drum beats either. Just as you can do things in parallel, so can you do them in serial. I'm not talking no Count Chocula. You're gonna want this for vocals and maybe even all the things. You set up a really fast, hard and heavy compressor with a very, very high threshold. Make sure it clamps right down on the sound. And then you set up a second, very, very gentle compressor. Compressor. Set up a very low ratio, very low threshold, and maybe even a slow attack and release. So 
Compressor number one is gonna get rid of all the peaks of your vocals. Compressor number two is just gonna raise the overall level and just squeeze it nicely. Try it the other way around too. And now let's talk about side chains. You take a different sound, like a kick drum, and use that to trigger the compression of your main track. You can either do this hard and heavy or nice and gentle, but it gives a lot of movement to your music. This is huge in techno. But it's not limited to, you know, rhythmic sculpting. It really helps with plosives. Now, what's a plosive? That's where you have a sound in a vocal with lots of P's and B's and sometimes T's. It's where your mouth is expelling a lot of air, but not a whole lot of sound is coming out. And mics hate it. In fact, since I'm saying plosive and P's and B's so much, I'm probably going to have to use some sidechain compression right now. And with sidechain, there's super interesting sonic sculpting capabilities here. It's like giving Michelangelo a Dremel. Now, there's multiband compression, which is totally a thing, but... Well, I don't use it often, so I'm not gonna talk about it, because that'd be like the blind leading the blind. This is the first of what I hope will be many how to make stuff go in the studio vlogs. So let me know what you think. Let me know what you want to see next. Till next Thursday, thanks for your comments and your questions. I'm Johnny.